Mein heutiger Gast ist eine Klasse für sich, meine Damen und Herren. Das ist ein aktuelles Album. Keithen, herzlich willkommen, David Bowie. Wow, that's great. We could have sold thousands of tickets for tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So you see, what's the right place to choose Cologne to I do your I could actually go around and sell the album right now, couldn't I? Yes, yeah. but it, it's very successful it's already commercially. Unbelievable. It started yeah. place four in it, our charts. Uh, it's been like this throughout Europe, and uh, it had uh, it went in at like 14 in America. It's really it's fantastic. Yes. So. You know, people love you, they almost go crazy. Cologne is the, the only place where you're playing your concert tomorrow. The concert this time, was, yeah. It yeah. was sold out in 45 seconds, did you know that? I think that's extraordinary. Yeah. Absolutely extraordinary. Have you been to Cologne before? Well, mind you, the audience, there's only 15 people in the audience, so 45 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Long so, ago. Thank God you speak English. <laughs> <laughs> So, have you been to Cologne before? Um, I have, yes, but I haven't been there for maybe, oh, since uh, 79, 1980. Something like that. Long time. Long, long time yeah. ago. Well, I used to, for a while, I was living uh, between New York and Berlin in the yes. uh, late 70s. Yeah. So I used to come to Germany a lot, and uh, I had a great time in Berlin. This is, of course, when the war was uh, still there. So it was a different kind of vibe. What, was that the I suppose. Was it a time when you lived with the old friend James Osterberg? James right? Osterberg, yeah, uh, Iggy Pop. Uh, there were about three or four of us. There was J uh, Jimmy and his girlfriend, and there was myself and one other. Um, we had our apartments in the same block on, uh, it was uh, called, uh, if I remember, Hauptstrasse, 155 in, uh, <laughs> in Charlottenburg. That's how I used to go. You got very drunk and like, Hauptstrasse, 155. <laughs> when you get home. Uh, and uh, we had a great time. And I remember none of us had any money then because either we'd been ripped off or, you know, dealings had gone wrong and we were all pretty broke. And, uh, and the three of them, it was my birthday coming up, they clubbed together and they got me an old 1955 Mercedes. Um, and uh, the, it was rusted completely. So we got in it and our feet just went through the floor. <laughs> we went around Berlin in that and I remember we dropped Iggy off at a club one night. It was, I think, uh, one of the anniversaries of the wall being put up, you know. And he went to a punk club and he came back later and he said, it was amazing. They'd made a birthday cake in the shape of the wall, which went all the way around the room. And at 12 o'clock at night, they jumped on it and ate it. <laughs> For real. Yes. It was, they really, they, they made this, the entire wall, and then ate it. And he said it was singularly the most moving moment in Berlin that he had spent. Because there's something really quite ideological about it, you know? Yes. And, and of course, it later on, it really... It was especially for him, for his birthday. No, no, no. It was the and celebration the of the wall. Of the, wall yeah. of the anniversary of the wall going yeah. up, you know? And it was, he said it was the strangest thing. And of course, that's virtually what they did. And that, but they didn't eat it, of course. <laughs> Well, I know one person who tried eating it, but he was stoned, but he was... <laughs> so now you came back to Europe on the QE2, yes? Well, not here, because there's no, no river, but, uh... <laughs> yeah, no, but... But if I, I could Rhine... have, I would have. But you travel on the QE2, yes, yeah? Yes, but the, the other direction, from Southampton to New York, and you came from the, uh, New York to Southampton. That's right, yeah, yeah. the two different captains. Yes. One only knows how to get to <laughs> Southampton. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's true. Uh, what was the average age? On the um, Q2 this uh, time. 114. Yes. <laughs> Something like that. Mainly widows. Really? No, it's changed a lot. When I, because I first went 30 years ago. Yeah. And uh, in those days, it really was older people, older generation, all that. This time around, I noticed there was a lot more families with children. You know, because they have these days, they have like things like playrooms on board. There were five restaurants, three cinemas, uh, casinos. Public library, and what television did you, studio. <laughs> uh, what, what did you do on board the whole day? Um, I read and watched DVDs. Did you walk around? Uh, no, I swam alongside for exercise. You know, <laughs> I, I used to keep up because I'm very fit these days. You know, yes, absolutely. Because <laughs> I swim yeah. against the QE2. That's yeah. how, how you do it. But no, most of the time I, I took. Uh, 
I took DVDs of all the films I can't watch at home because they're all like subtitled European avant-garde classics and they last 19 hours and have subtitles and nobody else in my house wants to watch them. So I, as I was traveling alone, I just watched them on my computer, you know, just... Uh, and uh, I listened to music and I made notes and I watched the sea. I watched the sea. Yeah. <laughs> The sea watch me. <laughs> <laughs> Five long days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is it it was wonderful. I loved it. I is it true you get up very early in the morning at, at around six o'clock? Well, both of us, both my wife and myself, get up um, between five and six in the morning and 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 the irony is that we now you know we just had a small child yes and, uh, and she's uh, 23 months now but of course we now get up before she does so we go and wake her up <laughs> you have to be <laughs> quiet is like, it's the it's the uh, the parents revenge you know <laughs> yeah so when uh, did your wife take take take, take wake up <laughs> and she And my baby says, oh, come on, give me another hour, right? <laughs> so we got milk. Ah. <laughs> uh, did your wife take lessons in, in preparing the birth? You know, in Germany, it's very uh, common oh, that, yeah, for yeah. example, young men accompany their women yeah. to, to uh, lessons like yeah. this. Well, she'd had practice because she also has another daughter, you know, from yeah. uh, her ex-marriage, so she knew what was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Well, that, no, she, you, you didn't go together. You yes, didn't she, yeah, we did the breathing things and yes. all that. You know, the did, counting one and oh you, god. Did you like that? Well, it was fine, and we got it down, and it was absolutely exact, and it was all timed and everything perfect. Yeah. And then, of course, on the actual day, like, oh my! <laughs> <laughs> everything goes, you know. And uh, it was just exciting. We raced there in the car and all that, and uh, and then I got to uh, cut, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. I liked, yeah. I liked doing that. But everything went, uh, went fine. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Wonderful. It was an easy birth. Yeah, it was good. So when you, when you sit uh, in, your, in your office or in your room in the morning and yeah. you start composing immediately? I do. There's, there's virtually a cup of tea. A cup of tea? Yeah. Do I compose immediately? <laughs> no. I just, I, I just sit there and I get on the telephone to Europe because I live in New York, yeah. you know, and uh, so I just I make telephone calls to Europe all morning. So what's happening? Did you see the Harold Schmidt show last night? Right, yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Whoa! That's amazing. <laughs> so I hear all the gossip, you know? Yes. But <laughs> yeah. you, I mean, you, you wrote this, this uh, um, record, the songs for this record, uh, in, in Woodstock, which we know from the festival. It's so very strange. It's a very quiet area. Yeah, there. it's a very hippie. It still is. I mean, it's all kind of flower writing on all the shops and everybody has long hair and um, wears beads and all that, you know? And I didn't think I was going to like it at all. But, uh, I didn't realize the actual studio was at the top of an extremely high mountain. Um, we were completely isolated from the rest of the area. And I love that because I love isolation. I'm very kind of masochistic like that. I love being cut off from everything. And, uh, and uh, for a writer, it just worked really well. And uh, I think I, I just sat down to write, and I had been doing for many months, putting together songs that I felt were very strong and attempted to do no more than express how I felt uh, my age with the new family and my feelings to the universe and our place on this world and, and all that. The little questions. <laughs> so now you're going on a, on a little tour now in Europe? Yeah, it's yeah. A, just a promotion tour. I don't want to be away from my family too long. I miss my baby very much indeed and I want to go home. Your uh, wife stayed in I America? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, and at the moment, coincidentally, she's uh, over in England with the whole family, but she's going back in a few days. Yeah. And then uh, I'll go back uh, at the end of this month and uh, then we'll catch up, I guess. Okay, we do a short commercial break now and then we hear you live here on Thank stage. Thank you very much. David Bowie, Madame Claire. Close of applause. That's my name, Dennis, the actual CD. Ethan, jetzt live. Everybody says hi, David Bowie. Said you took a big trip. You said you moved away. Didn't know the right thing to say. I 
should have took a picture Something I could keep Buy a little frame Something cheap For you Everyone says I Sailed a big ship They said you sailed away I didn't know the right thing to say I'd love to get a letter Love to know what's what Weather's good And it's not too hot For you Everyone says hi Everyone says hi Everyone says Don't stay in a sad place With me Tschüss.